500 teams remain, but only one will claim world domination. Welcome to part three of FIFA 23, Global Imperialism. This is how the global map is looking. Of course, we did have a little bit of a move last episode with Trabs on Sport starting their descent into Asia, but there's only a couple of teams that are one or two wins away from claiming their nations. So we could see some massive movements and some juggernauts created today. Here we go, lads. First team of the day is going to be Godoy Cruz, which means we start today off in Argentina. They're going to be heading northeast, which means Godoy Cruz are going to start the day off, the episode off with an upgrade. Rev those engines up because the center half Ferrari is going up to a 73. Albacete, that's the Spanish team. They're going to be heading directly south, which means they're going to have a matchup here with Levante, who is going to be the first team packing their bags in part three. Who's the first team getting imperialized? We're gonna go to a second leg. Here we go. Second leg between Albacete and Levante is going to be a last minute winner for Levante, which means the 70 rated striker Garcia is headed to Levante. And Levante takes this land, meaning they've kind of got themselves in a good position now because if they get drawn again, they've got a lot of potential upgrades. And I think the longer it takes for Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid to be awoken, the better for Spanish football. RB Salzburg, we're headed back to Austria. They're going to be heading west, almost southwest. Oh, this could be a massive game. It's going to be Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich looking to claim more of Austria. They've already made a little push. Are they gonna gain more? Or a Salzburg going to stop them? No, they can't. Bayern Munich continue, you continue their move through Austria. And it's gonna be Noah Okafor. I mean, he's an upgrade for a lot of sides, but for Bayern Munich, he doesn't even make the bench. It's not fair. Could today be the day where Austria is finally claimed and conquered by just one club? Also lads, today's gonna to be the last video I ever make in this office. It's been an incredible first year in America in this office, but I am in the process of moving apartments right now. No longer gonna be roommates with B4. Don't worry, there's no bad blood there. Very grateful for this place and the past year, but we're on to a new place. Hence the reason I let our messy poster just sit on the ground for the past few weeks since it fell down. Daegu, Deju FC off to the K-League. They're gonna be headed east, which is a huge matchup here with Ulsan Hyundai. Ulsan Hyundai with already a big win under their belts when they took down Pohang Steelers in part two. Can they continue their run against Deju? We're gonna go to a second leg again. This is the big game in Korean football. Who's going to emerge? Victorious, it is Ulsan Hyundai. And that's a huge upgrade. 76 rated Cecinia is gonna be headed to Ulsan Hyundai. Headed back to Scotland for the first time today. Dundee United, you are up. They're going to be heading west. I mean, it could have only been Aberdeen or St. Johnson, but they're gonna be taking on St. Johnson. Both these sides have been involved. St. Johnson pick up Danda and Dundee United got Stephen Fletcher upgraded. Who is going to survive here in Scotland? It is going to be Dundee United, Middleton with a brace. Meaning not only is the midfielder Carey headed to Dundee United, but so is Danda because they picked him up on their previous acquisition of Ross County. Dundee United fans, I hope you're watching because look how much of Scotland you've just turned orange. Dundee United might have just made themselves the new team to beat here in Scotland. Swedish team Varbergs have been drawn meaning they're gonna be heading northeast, which is gonna see them taking on Varnamo IFK, I believe, or is it gonna be Elfsborg? Let me get out the directions. Yeah, that's 100% Varnamo. Varbergs or Varnamo, who is kicking on in this experiment? It is Varnamo comfortably. They're gonna be sending the defensive midfielder LaRue to Varnamo. Back to Scotland we go. Kilmanock are headed west, almost southwest, which means they get themselves another upgrade. So it's gonna be their center half, Taylor, headed up to a 68. Southampton, we're staying in the UK map. And Southampton, once again, will be heading northeast. Had to get the wheel out on this one just to be certain, but they're gonna be facing Reading. The Saints versus the Royals. Southampton already with a win under their belt. Can they go further up this 
this English map. Yes, they can. El Yanusi in the 79th. Southampton already added Charlie Austin when they took over Swindon Town. Now they're going to get Tom Ince, another former Premier League player in the side. Andorra. Andorra. They came in last episode. Can they have another go? Andorra could push up or no, they're going to be heading southeast, which I think might be Barcelona. Yes, it is. Barcelona versus Andorra. I swear, if Andorra go into the Camp Nou and claim Catalonian region as well as the south of France, that would be absolutely phenomenal. Please, Andorra, do it for us. Cause the upset, please. Oh, Barcelona, continue. I've said it once, I'll say it again. I'm glad Barcelona, as much as there's, they've been winning a lot in this series, at least they're not getting anybody crazy good. Heading to Greece, it's Panathiarchos, headed to Athens. They're gonna be headed east, almost northeast, which means it's going to be a battle for Athens. Panathiarchos versus AEK. And I mean, that means there's only three Greek teams in the game. So after this, there'll be just two remaining. It's our first Greek matchup of the series, but it's only going to leave two remaining after this. Who will take control of Athens? It is going to be AEK eliminating Panathiarchos. Going to be the defensive midfielder Ruben Perez headed to AEK Athens. But then I get, that now gives AEK a massive advantage because them and Palk, it's basically a race of who can get the upgrades first. I mean, to be fair, if you're Palk, it might be smarter if you can get yourselves up north and claim all of the free nations of like Albania, North Macedonia, Bulgaria, Montenegro, Serbia, Bosnia, because none of these nations have teams playing in them. Sendefjord, I believe they're like Norwegian. They're somewhere in Scandinavia. So they're going to be heading southwest, which is going to see them just getting odds BK. One star team versus one star team. It's the battle of the Norwegian heavyweights. Who's going to survive? It's going to be Sandiford taking down odds. To be fair, they're going to get themselves a 68 rated goalkeeper, which takes them up to one and a half stars. Walsall, one of the teams that hung around for a long time in our UK imperialism video, up early-ish in this global experiment. And Walsall will be heading west. So it's going to be Walsall taking on Burton Albion. Of course, Burton Albion with the massive win against Wolverhampton, meaning Ruben Neves plays for Burton Albion. Will he be staying at Burton Albion or will Ruben Neves become a Walsall player? He's gonna be staying at Burton Albion. Burton Albion are going to add a striker to their squad in Stevens. Headed to Argentina for the second time today, Platense. The club from Buenos Aires is gonna be heading south, meaning they're gonna be taking on Estudiantes. So a lot of land up for grab here, grabs here in Buenos Aires. Estudiantes have been on a roll in this imperialism so far. Are they gonna keep their streak alive in Argentina? Ooh, maybe not. I mean, they dominated that first leg, but can they get it done here? In the second, we're off to a third. Okay, third leg. Estudiantes have dominated both. Are they going to dominate the third? Yes, they do. They finally get themselves the win. And they're only going to get stronger. The center half role is where they have needed an improvement, to be honest. They currently have like a 69 rated center half. So they're going to pick themselves up a 72 rated defender in Suso. Staying in Argentina as we have Sarmiento. And they're going to be heading north, in between north and north east. Oh, sh... Oh, they're going to... They're going to... Let's go! Estudiantes are up again! That's huge, Estudiantes trying to take more of Buenos Aires. Is this the first time across all three parts we've had the same team back to back? Let's see if it works in their favor. Estudiantes taking on Sarmiento, and the winner is Estudiantes. Their run continues. And they're going to get another upgraded center half here. Inseralde joining them. Oh, it's back to Greece. It's Palk. Here we go. Also, I've noticed that big gray section that was like on the corner of the wheel is gone, which means I think we're at 500 officially, but... That's nice. These are all the teams remaining. So we know they're going to be getting an upgrade regardless, but which direction are they going to be heading? They're going to be heading north, which I think means they claim a nation. So they're heading north 
east and they're just around here, which means they miss out on North Macedonia, but they're going to claim Bulgaria. There we go, lads. The first nation of the day claimed is Bulgaria by Palk. And reminder, because it is a nation they claim that didn't have teams playing on it, it is only a plus two upgrade, which means Divkovic goes up to a 78. Back to Poland we go. Jagalonia? You can't tell me with a team like team name like that. Phil Jack Gielka won't buy them if he doesn't become a billionaire. But they're going to be heading west. And that is going to be an upgrade here for Phil Jagielka's team. So the defensive midfielder, Sasek, goes up to a 74. MacArthur FC. We're headed back to the A-League. The team that eliminated my Western Sydney Wanderers are going to be heading northeast. Which means they're just going to be facing the Newcastle Jets. An all-Australian affair here headed up to the Hunter region, heading up to Newcastle. It's the Jets versus the Bulls. Of course, Marcelo playing for the Bulls after he was collected as reparations, as reward for taking out the Wanderers. Who's going to be moving on? It is going to be the Newcastle Jets taking out MacArthur, which means it is going to be both Davila and and Marcelo heading to the Jets. That is massive for them. Imagine the scenes if the Newcastle Jets become the biggest club in Australia. And I love how it's the local rivals, Newcastle and Central Coast, that now control all of New South Wales. Genoa, we're headed to Italy. They're going to be heading southwest, which means they will be taking on Sampdoria. Now, if you haven't seen the opening two parts, it might look like Sampdoria don't have much room at all, but you would be mistaken. They have the a large chunk of South France and the island of Bastia as well. So there is a lot up for grabs here. People forgetting that Sampdoria's team is stacked though. Ben Yedda, Malinowski, they recently added Belay. Can they continue their run or can Genoa be massive movers? They continue it at the death. Malinowski continues Sampdoria's domination. And they're going to add the established center half, Crescito, to their side. We're staying in Italy. Lecce are heading northwest. I don't know if you pronunciate it, Lise, Lecce, how have, how have you pronunciated it? They've got a big challenge ahead of them. They have Napoli, an all first division clash. That 86 rated Ossiman up for grabs. And the winner, is going to be Napoli once again. And as a result of the imperialization, it is going to see Umtiti. I forgot that he played for this club. Umtiti heading to Naples. Grenoble, Grenoble, you are up. The French outfit will be heading directly south, which is gonna see them taking on Sampdoria. They're gonna get in a piece of the action. Sampdoria with challengers here, there, and everywhere. They're gonna get to put their Crescito edition to the test. Nice and early, and they're gonna come away. They're not doing it comfortably, but Ben Yedda, the upgrade they got from Marseille, who came from Monaco, is gonna get them more territory and more of France. Unfortunately though, for Sampdoria, the loot that they have picked up here from Grenoble is nothing to write home about. Millwall, Mill. Zerka's men are heading south. Directly south for them. Oh, that might be right on the line. And the arrow, it's not like it's going slightly to the left or slightly to the right. That is as straight as an arrow, straight down. Directly south straight down. I think that's just Sutton United. If we're like going pixel by pixel, yeah, it follows this row here, which leads just into Sutton United. Sutton United of League Two taking on the championship level Millwall. Who is going to get more territory here in London? It is going to be Millwall. I can't imagine the addition of Ajiboy is going to change too much here for Millwall, but who knows? Who knows? Okay, mines, mines up again. Of course, they do have a large section of Germany along with the southern region here of Belgium. So this could really change a lot. And the arrow is going to head west, almost northwest. So for them, that's gonna push the Germany map. So what I'm gonna, cause we haven't had this before. If it's like a weird direction. So like, we're always gonna base it off their home map. But for this case, it's pushed into Belgium, which means we push into the Belgium map and then we go from northwest of their logo in Belgium, which is gonna be an upgrade and more land for them. Personally, I think that's the most fair way to go about it. Base it off their home badge, like their home nation first. And then if it pushes into a nation they've conquered, go from there. Which means they're already upgraded. A York goes from an 80 now to an 82. Tianjin, a team that's already had some success. They're gonna be heading north, almost north, 
northeast. So they're like in between north and northeast here, which is going to be around here. So yeah, it's going to be Beijing Guan, I believe that is. They're the team with the coolest logo, one of the coolest logos in the game. Will they continue? The scoreline is no, they have been thumped. They have been absolutely thumped, which means they're going to lose their center defensive midfielder Marita, and they're also going to lose the center half they picked up, Sunzu. Union St. Gallen. Yeah, I was going to say, I wanted to check the map because I was pretty sure they were the side that were completely surrounded by Genk. We didn't even need to check the wheel to know this would be the matchup. This team, Genk, have picked up some decent players. Can they conquer Royal Union St. Gallen? No, they can't. St. Gallen with their backs against the wall, completely surrounded, punch out the invaders and now take over gank territory. Meaning Hainan is headed to Royal Union St. Gallen, but so is Jan Vertonghen, Mario Gonzalez as well, and the center half Bauer. Barnsley. Hello, Barnsley. Which direction are you going to be heading, Barnsley? Barnsley will be heading west. I mean, to be fair, like directly west is going to be Bradford, but because it's like little southwest, I think it's still, yeah, it's still gonna be the tip of Bradford here. It's League One versus League Two. Of course, Bradford City with the massive knockoff of Huddersfield Town last video. So they've got a 78 rated goalkeeper now. Can they get another scalp from a league above? The scoreline is going to be 3 0 Bradford City. Yes, lads, the Bantams. Is that their nickname? I think it is. The Bantams getting another player and another piece of territory. Again, a nice upgrade here. A 69 rated center half for Bradford City. Sparta Praha. Okay. The Czech Republic, of course, being closed in on here by both German and Austrian sides. But Sparta Praha, will they have a matchup here or will they be surrounded? They're going to get themselves an upgrade, avoiding Slavia Praha and officially surrounding them. It's going to be their captain and defensive midfielder, Crazy, up to a 78. FC Ingolstadt off to Germany. Ingolstadt heading directly south, which means they're going to be facing 1860 Munich. This one's an interesting one because... Ingolstadt, if they win this, they're going to be right in the firing line of Bayern Munich. Meanwhile, 1860 are trying to get themselves out of the way of Bayern Munich, trying to give themselves a path that doesn't involve Bayern Munich. Who's going to be the winner? It's going to be Ingolstadt taking over part of Munich. That's a nice upgrade, a 70 rated attacking midfielder here for Ingolstadt. But like I said, they now find themselves direct neighbors with Bayern Munich. First time I've seen this name, Parcos Ferreira from Portugal. And for their first attempt, they're going to be going west, kind of southwest, which means, oh, poor guys, their first time is going to be FC Porto, a baptism of fire. Go big or go home, I suppose. Will they be going big or will they be imperialized? It's a 2-0 win. It held, like it lagged for a bit there and I was like, are we going to have like a 7-0 result for Parcos Ferreira? But it's 2-0 Porto. Again, though, not really a beneficial addition here for FC Porto's team. Hertha Berlin. Hertha Berlin. Okay. Don't even need to spin the wheel for this one because as we know, they are completely surrounded by Dresden. Dinamo Dresden have been a surprise packet so far. A couple of big scalps to their name, but another huge test here as they try to officially conquer all of Berlin. Dinamo Dresden versus Hertha Berlin. Oh, they have been shown up. Hertha Berlin, 5-0, one of the biggest results of imperialism so far. Meaning both Brecker and Broll are headed to Berlin. Goodbye, Dresden. It's been a fun time, but your area has officially been imperialized by Hertha Berlin. Krakowia. They were the winners of the first game, or one of the first games of this entire challenge. Been a while since we've been to, to Romania, but they're going to be heading north, almost like sort of northwest. But regardless, they're going to be getting an upgrade and getting this region right here. Meaning the left back, Bansu Banku, is up to a 73. AC Monza, that is Italian. Is that Balotelli's side or am I tweaking? Really has not been much action in North than Italy, but Monza are heading north 
uh, Northwest, which means they're gonna be going into a new country, which is gonna be Switzerland. And it's gonna be a big region. It's gonna be an upgrade for Monza here as they start to get themselves into Switzerland. But it is gonna be the central midfielder, Sensi, going up to an 81. Minnesota United. They already have one upgraded player to their name. They're gonna be heading south. Oh, you lucky buggers. You lucky buggers. They just missed out on Columbus crew and are gonna go south and take this state here. Meaning Reynoso now goes up to an 83. Minnesota, Minnesota building a good team. Back to Portugal we go. FC Famil Familiciao, I'm, I'm having a stinker today. They're going west regardless. So you might look at this and be like, oh, west, like, nah, that's not, that's nothing for them. Like that's the water. But the thing with Portugal is there is two teams off the coast and I'm including them. Like I said, you can jump water if you're in the same division. So they're gonna be going for these islands out here and taking on Santa Clara. Because if you ask me, like it's unfair to Santa Clara if they can't get themselves onto the mainland because how are they meant to kind of improve their squad? So it's Santa Clara trying to defend the island whilst also trying to get onto the mainland. Of course, FC Familiciao, Familiciao, how you pronounce it? Getting the massive upgrade there of Navarro at the striker role. Can he play a key part in getting them a result? Yes, he does. He gets himself a brace. And they're gonna get themselves a new goalkeeper as well. Diaz headed their way. So Santa Clara gotta give up their little piece. Well, here we go. Giving up the islands and making it FC for Miliciaos. Off to France. We've got a League Two side here, Quevely Rouen. And the club from just out of Paris will be heading east, which means they're pushing for a lot of land here, trying to take on Valencians. It's a League Two clash here. Valencians already with a win under their belt. Who's going to come away here with a big result? The winner is going to be Quevely Rouen. Have, that is a huge scalp. That is a massive scalp. Not gonna lie, I thought Valencians were gonna get the job done every day of the week. So they're going to get their hands on not only Kakuta, but also this guy here, Jason Bethomier. Bethomier is their highest rated player from Valencians and Kakuta, I believe is the man they picked up when they took over the previous club in the previous episode. Yeah, they got Kakuta from Amiens as I check my notes. Hello, Helsinki. Hello, Helsinki. Oh shit. Helsinki will be going Southwest. So we're gonna go to the world map here and that is going to see them take over Kazakhstan. Of course, they have got a little section of China, but they've gone southwest, which has made them take over Kazakhstan. Oh my God. Which now sends Hetimoj up to a 74, only plus two again, because Kazakhstan obviously had no teams in FIFA. Headed back to Spain as it's Alaves up to bat. Alaves are gonna be going southwest, which means they're gonna be facing Miranda here in an all Spanish affair, both in the second division. But of course, Alaves got the massive scalp of Bill Bow recently, meaning they have Munyan in their side. So the 84 rated player could be huge for either side. Where's he gonna be playing? Who's gonna be imperialized? We're gonna have to find out in the second leg. Here we go, second leg, Alaves, the home team for this one. And the winner is a oh, third leg. I hate third legs. Third leg, neither of these teams want to imperialize the other, but it is going to be Alaves who are successful claiming more land. 72 rated center midfielder Garcia headed to Deportivo Alaves. Cagliari up, going back to Italy. So they're gonna be going north or east. Their one's interesting though, because they are are on an island. So going from the logo, northeast is gonna be Roma. Yeah, it's definitely Roma. Roma not only trying to defend the capital, but also get themselves a new island in the process. How's this one gonna turn out? It is going to be, oh, a, a narrow win there for Roma, but they get it done regardless. Again though, nothing crazy in terms of an upgrade for Roma. Nandes, 74 rated, he's not even gonna make the bench. We have not been to Ireland for a hot minute, but it's Dundalk. Dundalk are gonna be heading Northwest, which means they're gonna claim their first piece of Northern Ireland here, getting this little safe section right there. Fair play to him. It's going to be their striker, Hoban, going up to a 66. Alanya Spore off to Turkey for the first time today. They're going to be going basically directly east, which I mean, they're basically covered by Antanya, Antanya Spore. Oh my God, I still can't pronounce their name. Antanya, Antalya Spore. 
They are, they are covered by Antalya Spore, so it's basically impossible for them to verse anybody else. Antalya Spore did add Pozuelo into their side when they got their previous win, so they're building a nice team here. Can they add to it, or will they be taken over here by Alanya Spore and Imperialize? No, they won't. It's going to be Haji Wright, the American striker, I believe it is, getting them the winner and through to another territory. Build themselves a sneaky, decent side, though, as they add Leroy Fur to the middle. Field. Jeju United, are they? I think they're South Korean. So Jeju United, there's no point spinning the wheel because they can't go anywhere but north. Even if they get north, like east, they're still going to be going in this corner here. So we're just going to give them this territory and give them the upgrade. Lee Chang Min now finding himself 74 rated. Crawley Town, okay. Crawley Town heading basically directly north. Crawley Town, very famous for their exploits in our UK imperialism video. They're gonna start their time off today with an upgrade, which is perfect for them, to be honest. The Red Devils will have their goalkeeper, ironically dressed in blue, getting an upgrade to a 68. Staying in England, we've got Leeds United. Wondering when they would pop up. They've been good in every imperialism video we've done. They're gonna start their journey headed though south east, which is going to see them, unfortunately for Bradford City stake, taking on the Bantams. Bradford City have been building slowly. They've added a center half and a goalkeeper, but they might have met too big of a match too early on here. Leeds United versus Bradford City. It's a draw. Oh, Sinistera equalized to the death. Bradford City almost got away in this first leg. But here we go, fellas. Time for a second leg at Ellen Road. Come on, Bradford City. I'm being biased. Oh my God, Bradford City bring it back in the 84th minute. Bradford City refusing to go down without a fight. Third leg. No, Bradford City. Oh, they've been eliminated by Patrick Bamford and Leeds United, meaning it's gonna be the goalkeeper Vaslik headed to Leeds United, Anderson headed to Leeds United, and Smallwood headed to Leeds United. Back to the Kaylee we go, it's Suwon Samsung, and they're gonna find themselves heading east, which sees a battle for the top of Korea. Suwon versus Gangwon. Big game here for the north of Korea. It's the Suwon Blue Wings taking on Gangwon FC. Who's getting imperialized and who's getting Korean Northern domination? Gang won with a huge result there. An upset result as they take down Suwon Samsung Blue Wings. Massive result there and it's going to be the center half. Bull Tice, 74 rated. Nice pick up there for Gang won. We're going two in a row here in the K-League. We've barely had any K-League all series long. And now we've got two Kaylee games in a row. Let's go. So Yunbuk Hyundai will be going southwest, which is going to see them taking on Jeju United. So here we go. Jeju versus Yunbuk Hyundai. Of course, Jeju have that 74 rated upgraded midfielder and it's going to be going to a second leg. Second leg, Yonbuk, the home team for this one. And they are going to get the win. Meaning 74 rated Lee Chang Min is headed to Yonbuk Hyundai. South Korea very quickly filling up all around. Gwangju completely surrounded now by Yonbuk. LAFC back to the west coast of the MLS. And LAFC are going to be heading uh, east, south. Southeast. Of course, they already got the scalping of uh, San Jose Earthquakes it was in the last video, but they're going to get themselves an upgrade now, taking the state of Nevada. I mean, people have been calling for a Las Vegas MLS franchise. Looks like they're finally going to get their own MLS franchise. Say hello to a name we all recognize and maybe love. It's Giorgio Chiellini going up to an 84. FC Basel off to see one of Switzerland's biggest teams in action. And FC Basel are headed north, which is quite funny because if you're FC Basel, you want to be, keep going south. Like, look how much random area there is to get upgrades. But instead, they're going to be pushing into Germany. Actually, no, they're not. They're going to be pushing into France. I think they're, like, right on the border, to be honest. I think this is them right there. And, I mean, they went kind of... They went, like, more east than they did west. So, we're going to say right on the corner of Germany. Which is going to see them taking on Freiburg. Not the second team. Of course, there are two Freibergs in FIFA 23. They're taking the Bundesliga team on. Okay, FC Basel. Let's see what you've got in the tank. Let's see what you have going for you. Are they going to get a big scalping here of Freiburg? No, they are not. 
SC Freiburg will be descending south and entering Swiss territory. It might be a neutral country, but they're getting invaded. Freiburg there with an opportunity to get themselves some solid growth as well. It is not even close compared to like their best player versus their second best player. 78 rated goalkeeper hits is going to be hitting up Freiburg. They're a team that have already had great success today, Levante, and they're going to be heading west, which is going to see an upgrade for them. It's going to be this territory here because it was slightly southwest more than it was uh, northwest, so that's another upgrade for Levante. So it's going to be their 78 rated center midfielder Campania going up to an 80. They're giving themselves the best chance possible to really shake up this competition. Sao Paulo, we have not been to Brazil, I think for the end, no, we've, we had Fluminense in the second episode, but we have not been to Brazil today. They're going to be heading west, basically northwest. So diagonally from the center. Is that going to, oh, is that going to be Santos or is it going to be this team here? So it's basically in between west and northwest. So it's going to be through there. Yeah, that's going to be like by the skin of their teeth. It's going to be Santos versus Sao Paulo. Two massive teams here in Brazilian football, of course. If you haven't seen parts one and two, I will explain, because of FIFA's licensing and stuff, the South American teams that aren't from Argentina, we can't simulate games with them. They can't be put into tournament mode, so I've got to watch these games through. But to be fair, this isn't a game that I'm mad about having to watch. Two awesome teams. Santos in the box early here. It's Santos through Limu who puts that one top corner. And Santos take an early lead here against Sao Paulo. They're in here again. They're in here again. Santos picking Sao Paulo apart. Oh my God. That is 3-0. That is a rocket outside the box. I think this striker, Lumio Limo, has a hat trick. And there it is, lads. Santos dominate and imperialize Sao Paulo. And it will be 78 rated winger Dutra headed to Santos. Minnesota United again. Are they going to flee the competition again? They're going to be going southeast, which is going to be... Yeah, that's the Columbus crew. This could be massive. Minnesota versus Columbus. Not going to lie, whoever wins this game sets them up brilliantly because Columbus crew have the upgraded Zeller Ryan and they picked up Zerd and Shakiri from Chicago. And Minnesota have just been getting upgrade after upgrade on Reynoso, who's now 81 rated. This is a huge game in American football and it goes to the Columbus crew. They get themselves Reynoso and this guy here, Franco Freyanpe, Freyapain. And as an FC Cincinnati fan, it's kind of making me nervous how good Columbus crew are becoming in this. Also, I meant to point this out last episode, but uh, St. Louis City, despite being a new MLS franchise, have not been added to FIFA yet. So I have to remove them from this map. Liverpool. Okay, this is a big, this is maybe the biggest team we've had all day. Liverpool are heading directly south, which means they take on another lesser opponent. They already beat Wigan Athletic, but now they have Tranmere Rovers. I could be wrong, but was it Tranmere Rovers who eliminated Liverpool in the in the UK imperialism video? I can't remember off the top of my head, but obviously they lost to a really, really weak side, which is what I'm hoping can happen again here. No, they can't. Liverpool take down Tranmere, which means Liverpool get the great honor of getting Phil Bardsley, McDonald, who they got from Salford, and this right back here, Dakers Cogley, who I'm sure are all going to fit in so well at Liverpool. Heading back to France, it's EA Guangam, and they're going to be going east. They could only go east. They could only verse Stade Brestois or Lorient, but they're going to be versing Lorient. Not going to lie, Lorient have been going about their business quite nicely. They got Albin Lafont when they took down FC Nantes last time out, but against Guan Gump, they're gonna continue their run with a one nil win. And they're gonna take a 73 rated center half as their collection. Roma again. Roma will be heading Northwest, which means they're gonna be taking on Pisa. They're trying to get a Pisa Pisa. Surely you're thinking Roma are cruising through this one. This would be a massive upset if Pisa can bring this result their way. <laughs> We're heading to a second leg. They almost did it. All right, second leg in Rome. It's going to be Roma versus Pizza, and they destroy them in the second leg. Again, though, for Roma, like a 75 rated pickup isn't terrible, but they don't really need that, do they? They're, they're like getting a lot of wins, but 
Not really significant ones. Slowly but surely though, they're working their way up the coast and they now touch borders with Torino in Turin. Liverpool again. This game really wants Liverpool getting some, getting some opportunities. And again, I think that's the exact same direction as they got last time, Southeast. Meaning Liverpool will be facing Stoke City. Stoke with a few wins under their belt, but this is a huge test for them, although, if you look at those weather conditions, it's a rainy night in Stoke. Can Liverpool do it on a rainy night in Stoke? Come on the Potters, come on the Potters. Oh no, Mo Salah at the death. Oh, Mo Salah. I really thought Stoke were about to cause a massive upset. So Liverpool will be getting Twanza Bay. They will be getting Knight and they'll also be getting Harrison. Again though, nothing really huge happening for Liverpool there. They get past another team, but don't take anybody huge in the process. With these big teams, it just takes one slip up for everything to change. But lads, if you are enjoying today's imperialism video so far, make sure you subscribe down below if you are new around here. We are on the push for 500,000 subscribers in the year 2023. So help your boy get there. What a Poznan. They got a win last episode, didn't they? So they're going to be going uh, southeast, which means they're going to be facing Widzu. This team here, Widzu, RTS Widzu. In these nations like Poland, they're quickly starting to lose numbers every game that goes on. They're about to drop another side here. <laughs> no, they're not. Second leg here, and I'll, I would almost bet the channel on this being a draw. I mean, I hope it's not a draw. I hope it's. A, I was about to say, I hope it is a draw now, but it's actually going to be Widzu Lods getting the result, meaning both li both Liver, who they picked up from their last win, and Ivanov are both going to be changing to Widzu Lods. Accrington, we're headed back to England. Accrington, Stanley, what direction are you heading? You're heading northeast, which means they're going to be facing Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough with a big scalping of Burnley last time out. Surely they don't lose to Accrington Stanley. Brown Hill into the starting 11, and they do get the win 4 2. I'm sure they're absolutely over the moon to be getting McConville. Show me potato salad. AC Monza again. The club that started their ascent into Switzerland will be going to the west. Like we said, we look at the Italian map first. So, west for them here is Como. Monza trying to make Lake Como their very own. They got the 81 rated Sensi into the starting. 11 here. Who's going to be the winner? And it is Monza with ease. Not a shocking addition to the side though. A 76 rated goalkeeper joining Monza. It could have been Cesc Fabregas though. Damn, imagine that. VFL Bochum of Germany are next up. And Bochum are heading northeast. Meaning, I don't think they take on uh, Essen. I think they go next to a border. Yeah, they go into the Netherlands because that's them like around there. Yeah, so I think they're going to be take. I think this is where they would be here. So they're going to be taking on UFC, FC Utrecht. One of the standout teams from the Netherlands so far. FC Utrecht versus VFL Bochum. FC Utrecht, the three, the team with three world-class goalkeepers in Jasper Sillison, Matt Ryan, and Geronimo Rulli. Who is going to be able to take them down? They've got three quality goalkeepers. They're taking on VFL Bochum, and they're making a move into Germany. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this. I don't care if you guys think it's unfair. They're getting another goalkeeper. Oh my God, Utrecht get another goalkeeper. This is hilarious. But there we go, turning this part of Germany red and chucking the FC Utrecht logo in there. Hey, it's the Newcastle Jets. We're headed back to the A-League. Are we gonna have an F3 derby? No way, no, they're going to be taking on the Brisbane Roar. Didn't even need to look at the map to know that's what was going to be happening. Also, I love how the Wellington Phoenix are just all still alone here in New Zealand. They've got so much room and so much land to grab. They just haven't been drawn. So here we go, headed up to Brisbane. I think they're playing out of Redcliffe Stadium right now, Redcliffe. But the Jets have added Davila and Marcelo to their side. They've got a very good side, I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie, the Jets, but... Who is going to survive Australia? We're headed to a second leg. Not going to lie, I didn't realize Carl Jenkinson and Brandon O'Neill were both at the Jets. I thought Brandon O'Neill was at the Glory and Jenkinson was at Melbourne City. But here we go. Second leg is going to be another draw. Leg number three. Back up in Queensland. 
The scoreline is a 2-1 win to the Brisbane Roar. They have eliminated the Newcastle Jets, which is going to see Davia and Marcelo headed to the Roar. But it's the striker, the man whose name I could never pronounce yet, even when I was there, headed to the Roar as well. Marcelo officially off to his fourth club in the Brisbane Roar. And the Brisbane Roar have officially entered New South Wales. Juventus, Piemonte Calcio, Juventus. I need to change that name. It's Juventus. And Juventus will be heading north southeast. That's massive. They're going to be taking on Inter Milan. Juventus versus Inter Milan. And not only who Whoever wins this will get a big player from either side. They're also going to get a plus two upgrade to this area because they will have it cornered. We need to watch this one. Juventus trying to imperialize Milan into Milan. Who's going to win this battle between Turin and Milan? Quadrado going there to Dusan Vlahovic lays it off. Why are you not shooting there, Di Maria? And Dzeko in the box, and Dzeko fires into Milan into the lead. Or is he offside? Is he offside? No, they gave it the goal. It didn't pop up in the corner. Vlahovic, it's one all. Dusan Vlahovic gives Juventus the perfect start of the second half. And there it is, lads. It stays a stalemate. So we are off to a penalty shootout. Couldn't split the two sides. Laturo Martinez, what a rocket of a penalty there to give Inter Milan the lead. You would say whoever wins this game is going to go a long way into conquering all of Italy and potentially beyond, like into Switzerland and all that. Barea, into Milan, only score rockets. Angel Di Maria against Onana, that is another rocket. Henrik Mikatarian, where's the Armenian going? Rockets, yeah, this is, this is unreal. This is an unreal game. Rabio, he's gonna send Onana the wrong way. Who is going to blink first? Brozovic versus Chesney straight up the guts. Faioli going another penalty right up the guts and it is now sudden death. Five penalties now. Dzeko, it's saved from Chesney. If Juventus score this, then they will conquer into Milan. It's Danilio for the win. He sends him the wrong way. Inter Milan have been conquered and imperialized. So the wheel has decided that Brozovic will be the man making the move. And 86 rated Wojciech Szczesny will be getting the upgrade for Juventus. Back to the Chinese Super League we go. Henan Songshan, you're up. Which direction are Henan gonna be heading? They're gonna be heading west. Meaning because of the direction of their logo, they're gonna be getting themselves an upgrade. Team's starting to get closer and closer though to Helsinki. It's gonna be the former Sydney FC. He was, I swear he was like a striker or an attacking midfielder. But anyways, Adrian Mejayeski going up as much as it pains me, as much as I don't like him, going up to a 76. Juventus again, can't keep them away. They're going to be going northwest. Oh, I guess they're already sick of, they're already sick of Italy. So that means if that's them there, they're going to be going into France. And so they're going to be taking on this team here. Ennessy. Seems like Juventus don't feel like challenging themselves too much. They got the 88 rated Chesney, Brozovic in there, and they're taking on a second division French side. Come on, Annecy, pull off a massive upset. Please, please, Annecy. God damn it, it's 3 0. Dusan Vlahovic getting a brace. It's going to be an almost pointless addition to this Juventus side, but it is officially going to signal Juventus's entrance into French football. Although to be fair, if they end up going even further into France, it looks like for the short term, they're going to have three massive tasks ahead of them. West Ham United. Hello, hello. Haven't seen the Hammers in this video so far. They're going to be... Oh, I think that's going to be Tottenham. Or is it going to be Leighton Orient? Oh, I think it's... Uh, I need to get the arrow out. I need to get the arrow out, the compass. So they're heading in between, just in between, like south, or sorry, northeast and east. So it's there. Hold on, I need to go pixel by pixel. Oh yeah, it's just gonna be Leighton Orient. Only just. Leighton Orient famously with Thomas Party in their side. Famously, they took down Arsenal. Can they get themselves another massive scalp? Come on, Leighton Orient. Take down West Ham. Do it for all of us. Oh, second leg. Come on, Charlie Kelman. Get the job done. Charlie Kelman, Leighton Orient. No! Oh, Charlie Kelman scores, but West Ham United ultimately win. 
and imperialize Leighton Orient, meaning both Thomas Party and Smythe are heading to the Hammers. Surprise, surprise. We're in the new setup. Gonna finish today's episode in this new setup. Only moved in two days ago, so yeah, it's looking pretty bare bones at the moment. And I apologize if there's a bit of an echo, I'm currently buying some stuff to make it not so echoey. Currently got blankets and scarves and pillows all on the ground trying to make the sound not as bad. But we're gonna finish off the final games of today's episode in here. All right, lads, the first team in the new setup. It is going to be AIK. They're from Sweden, aren't they? And they're gonna be heading south. I mean, it's basically in between, like south and southeast. So we're gonna go there and they're going to be versing DIF, Du Gardens IF. Here we go, lads. Neither of these sides have not been, have been involved in the series so far, but it's gonna be AIK winning at 3-1. God, I hope this echo isn't as bad as it sounds in real life. But it is gonna be the centre midfielder Magnus Eriksson heading across to AIK. LASK is the Austrian team. And they're also gonna be heading basically in between Southeast and South, which I believe means they're just going to enter SV Reed territory. So here we go, Reed versus Lask. Of course, that 71 rated nuts captain player in there. Is he gonna make an impact? Or will Lask take over their territory? Lask are gonna absolutely go berserk, meaning Nuts is headed their way. Lads, I'm gonna be honest, the echo in this room is dreadful and I don't think it's making for a good video. So I'm gonna end part three here, get the sound in this new apartment sorted for part four and make that one an extra long imperialism video. Thank you guys for the love on the series so far. I will see you for part four in two days time. It's been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.